Welcome to the Joy of Music. Featuring the First Lady of the Organ, Diane Bish. We invite you to meet great composers and performers. Travel to Europe's ancient monasteries and snow-covered Alps. Visit great historical cathedrals and beautiful lakes and gardens. Praise ye the Lord. Praise Him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise Him with a psaltery and harp. Praise Him with a trumpet. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Hello, I'm Mary Watson, producer and executive director of The Joy of Music. We have received many letters from you, the viewers, wanting to know about Diane Bish. What is she really like? I've been a close friend of Diane Bish for 18 years. Not only a close friend, but a business associate. I've watched her career, I've watched her as a brilliant performer, as an inspired composer, and as an ambassador to further the cause of great sacred and classical music. Today we would like to bring you a program showing her dynamic range of her accomplishments, her background, and the very funny person that is Diane Bish. First and foremost, Diane Bish is a virtuoso. Critics hail her as a stunning, astonishing, incredibly fiery, and dazzling performer. Diane is a composer. Her flair and passion imbue her published works, which include everything from organ arrangements of classical and sacred music to original pieces for solo organ and for organ with choir, pianos, chamber ensemble, orchestra, and various other combinations. She is also a conductor, performing with her own chorale and instrumental ensemble, as well as with symphonies, chamber orchestra, and choirs. Diane Bish's albums are recorded on many of the great organs of the world, including organ masterpieces, original works, hymn arrangements, and music for organ and cello, brass, pan flute, choir, and orchestra. She is best known, though, for her award-winning international television series, The Joy of Music. Welcome to a musical journey of France, from the capital of Bavaria, Munich. A musical journey of Vienna. From Innsbruck, Austria. Lucerne, Switzerland. Salzburg, Austria. The Netherlands, or Holland, as most people know it. Tyrol, Austria. A musical journey on the Danube. The Melk Monastery in Melk, Austria. In the ski village of Arosa, Switzerland. The Holy Land from the Etal Monastery in Germany. As executive producer, performer, and host, Diane has produced almost 200 programs seen on eight cable networks, independent and public broadcasting stations throughout the United States and Canada, the Worldwide Armed Forces Network, 
and in international syndication. Indeed, the scope of her influence reaches far and wide in the world, and in the world of music. Diane Bish recently joined the ranks of such notables as Leonard Bernstein, Irving Berlin, and Robert Shaw in receiving the highest honor of the National Federation of Music Clubs in America, the National Citation. For distinguished service to the music, artistic, and cultural life of the nation. Previous citation recipient Van Cliburn spoke at the award ceremony in Dallas. What a wonderful accomplishment basis for an organization, as we know, chartered by Congress and peopled by the finest citizens who stand for quality all around our country to give direction and guidance for the development of music. But we have a great organization like the National Federation of Music Clubs that I will always be indebted to because the most important thing, there are artists, there are performers, but great music is forever. Thank you. These words just sort of sum up Diane Bish. She is the first lady of the Oregon, the most widely seen and heard organist in the world today. And for your achievements, Diane, as a concert and recording artist, a composer and conductor, and of course your beautiful show, the television production of The Joy of Music, and on and on for your many accomplishments, we wish to present, we are honored to present to you this citation. We are honored to present this to you. <laughs> I am so honored to be here with all of you this evening, each and all of you who have been an influence in so many people's lives at every level of music. And you know, I'm especially honored that this award would go to an organist, because you know the organ is supposed to be the king of instruments, but it is, isn't always treated that way. I have to tell you about one church job that I had, and I played my first Sunday there, and I went outside afterward and I read the signboard, and it read, Services 9, 15, and 11. The sermon, What is Hell Like? Come here, our new church organist. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to say that, as you well might imagine, after spending six years of making a television program once a week that includes the great instrument, the organ, and some of the great organs of the world in Europe and Israel and other places, and combining the organ with great artists of world renown, that I've gotten a little tired, and it's a, a bit wearing to find new music to play every week and to learn it and to perfect it and to write a script and decide what's going to be on the program and who the guest artist will be. But it has been a joy to me, and it has especially been a joy to also, through this program, to give praise and acknowledgement of God, who is the giver of every gift. And uh, I choose to do this on these programs. Uh, I, I must say that in doing so, it has kept it off some of the networks, because to mention God is not one of the favorite things on some secular networks. I hope to change this. But I feel... I feel so um, thankful to God for the gifts that he has given me and certainly given to all of us. And this award gives me great encouragement 
to keep going. Thank you very much. Thank you, Diane. Well, Diane, receiving that national citation is really quite an honor. And uh, your viewers see you and the accomplishments and the beautiful performances and the great shows that you bring to them. But today, I would like for the viewers to see what is the real Diane Bish like, the Diane that I have known for so many years. Tell us about your, your, where you were born and about your past. Well, I was born in Wichita, Kansas, and I still try to go back there on my way to concerts or on my way back because my parents still live in the same home where I was brought up. My sister lives near Wichita, so when I go back, I can visit my whole family. And uh, it's, I'm so fortunate, really, to still have my parents and, and to be able to spend time with them. Well, I'd like to know a little bit about your parents. My parents are really wonderful people. Um, they gave me so much when I was young and still today in the way of spiritual values. Uh, the, the true meaning of life was always stressed so much in our home and a personal relationship with Jesus Christ was very important to my parents. And that has become the most important thing to me also. And then musically, they did so much for me. Every Saturday afternoon, as a matter of fact, my mother would turn on the Metropolitan Opera and have it, uh, have it playing while we were doing the household chores. Not only that, but she would buy books on opera so that I could read about the operas before they took place and I could know what was happening. And then at the same time, when I would uh, get my chores uh, completed, I would take a little music stand and I would put some music on it. It wasn't the opera playing. But I would open the music and I would conduct what was happening in the opera. So. I got a real feel for music. This is when I was four, five, six years old. I got a feel for the music. I uh, obtained a love for the music, and uh, it stayed with me all of my life. And uh, amazingly enough, my father is an artist, a wonderful artist. He's won many awards in Kansas for his, for his artwork. And through him, and through both of my parents, I really uh, have a a true appreciation and love of the arts and for things beautiful. You know, it's very interesting that uh, a lot of people would say, well, where is Wichita, Kansas, and whatever happens there? But there's a great deal of culture in Wichita. Uh, first, I had a high school with a pipe organ in it. Hmm. Therefore, I could uh, play assemblies, I could play concerts. Even in my high school, we had a wonderful high school orchestra. I played concertos with a high school orchestra. And then I had a wonderful organ teacher. Her name was Dorothy Addy, starting when I was 14 through the year um, 18 years old. And she taught me so much. She knew that I liked a challenge. Mm. And she gave me music. She just kept handing it out to me, and I just kept just eating it up because I was so excited to learn new music and and everything was a challenge for me. And that was a wonderful uh, start to my, to my Oregon career. Well, Diane and I have stayed in close touch with each other for a number of times. And she, whenever she comes home, she calls and we get together. And then I've been to Coral Ridge a number of times and was at the first dedication in title and some of the workshops she's had down there. So we've always been, I consider her just another daughter, really, a musical daughter. In high school and in college, Diane Bish was known as much for her quick wit and ready smile as for her organ recitals and awards. She earned both her bachelor and master degrees at the University of Oklahoma and studied under the famous organ teacher, Mildred Andrews. Well, you know, uh, Mildred Andrews had many Fulbright scholars and national competition winners, and she uh, challenged me to apply for a Fulbright grant to study in Amsterdam, Holland. And so I did that, and I, I did receive one, and I went to the Amsterdam Conservatory of Music, 
and studied with Gustav Leonhardt, who was really one of the leading harpsichordists mm. and organists in the world. After that, where did you go? I also studied in Paris. I received uh, oh, a yeah. grant, uh, a French government grant for studying in Paris. With whom did you study when you lived in France? Well, I was very fortunate to have studied with two great teachers uh, in France. One in Paris was with the, she's a very famous lady actually, and her name was Nadia Boulanger. And she has been the teacher of many of our famous musicians today, such as Leonard Bernstein and Aaron Copeland. Mm. And we could just go on and on and name the people that uh, are so well known in music today. And the thing that was so great about this lady is that she would really teach the basic, the very basic elements of music, uh, the tools of music, the concentration of the mind. And uh, she, she really wouldn't tell you how to compose a piece of music because everyone has their own individual way to do that. But it was a matter of discipline, concentration, and the very basic elements of the art. And then also I studied with uh, the very well-known Marie-Claire Alain, who is one of the leading French organists today. And uh, she was a marvelous teacher, a marvelous person, and, and a real influence on my life. How did living in Europe influence your life? It was while living in Europe, I believe, that I, let's say I would go to these cold churches in the wintertime to practice. It was so cold, your fingers were freezing off almost, but every day I had to do it. And that really, I think, helped me with my discipline in practicing and, and just when it was so freezing cold, I just did it anyway. I put on my coat, I put on my scarf, and I went to practice. But when I would come out of the church, around so many of these great market churches, you find the markets, you find the beautiful culture, you find the beautiful buildings, you find the incredible scenery, the mountains, the Alps, so much to see. And this really was my inspiration for the Joy of Music television program, that not only was I experiencing these great old instruments, the organs in these churches, but I was experiencing the, the beauty of the cathedrals and the churches, coming outside and experiencing the customs and traditions of the people, the beauty of the buildings, the beauty of, of the artwork, and, and the scenery around. That's amazing. And those are the very things that you have used on the Joy of Music to make such beautiful, inspiring programs. for a vacation to visit your parents, Dr. D. James Kennedy called you and offered you a job at the Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church as the organist there, but you declined. I, I sort of thought about it for over a year, and I really felt led in my spirit that whole year that followed, well, that's where I should be. Mm. And so it was a little over a year later that I called him back, and I said, well, Dr. Kennedy, are you still interested in having me come to the church? And he said, yes, I am, and yes, we are. I said, well, then I, w I would like to come. And that's how I got here, and, and I've been here ever since, and it's really been the only full-time full -time job that I've ever had. Indeed, Diane's career at Coral Ridge Church has been one of great opportunity and tremendous success. The 117 rank Rafati organ was chosen, designed, and built to her specifications. It is one of the great instruments of the world. 
The highly successful Coral Ridge Concert Series was founded by Diane and the Director of Music, Roger McMurrin. The church concerts feature internationally famous Christian artists and attract over 40,000 in attendance. Her book, Church Music Explosion, and popular workshops cross denominational boundaries to help promote excellence in church music. For 10 years, she has appeared on the weekly national television church service of Dr. D. James Kennedy. Diane Bish is not only a lady of prodigious talent, but she has a vital Christian faith as well. And in all that she does, that faith shines through. Whether her playing, her composition, her books, her television program, everywhere, you can see that the excellence that she has stems from a dynamic faith in Christ. It's been my great joy for all these years to work with her as my colleague. Diane, I know that you've achieved a great deal in your professional career and as an individual. What are your plans for the future? What would you like to do in the future that you haven't done? Well, I really want to continue doing what I'm doing now, the joy of music and playing at the Corridge Church and writing music. I love to write music and playing concerts. But one thing I would really love to do is to expand the joy of music to some secular networks where more people will hear it. You know, we're, what, over in over 100 million homes now worldwide. You know, we've received so many letters, and I have received many letters of people saying how these programs that combine the, the, the wonderful grace of God and his, his gifts to us and the wonderful music, how it's inspired them. And I'd like to reach more people through the medium of television, even than we're reaching now. The most popular programs that the viewers really enjoy are the ones produced in Europe. Well, you know, everybody thinks, oh, you know, you travel around and, and you give concerts it's and you fun. do television programs. It's such fun. It's so exciting. If they only knew. If they only knew that we spent 14 to 16 hours a day in a church in Europe that uh, just this past summer in the Strasbourg Cathedral, just to get to the organ, we had to go up 130 stairs, out on the roof, down 30 stairs, out on the roof, and in through the door of the organ because the organ hangs on the wall like a little eagle's nest. If they only knew that in the winter time when we go to shoot all the beauty in the churches, that it's freezing cold in the churches. One year when we went, it was 35 degrees below zero. And not only that, the transportation, you never know how you're gonna get somewhere or exactly how you're going to get the, the equipment up to the organ loft or how you're going to get to a church. I know that humor is a big part of your personality and also a big part of, of you and the joy of music is the style that you bring to it. So many people have written and asked about your gowns. Where do you get these wonderful gowns? Well, you know, I've always wanted to be a clothes designer. Really, I love uh, beautiful colors together and I like different things. And uh, so really the, the performance on the organ and uh, all the things that I do on television really give me a chance to to use these ideas that I've had for a long time in uh, designing these gowns. Sometimes I can find them in stores, not too often, so I have to design them because they're long dresses with a long slacks underneath to match the dress. And uh, they're not only used for modesty, but also to give a little sparkle to the performance. Oh, and speaking of sparkles, uh, your shoes even glitter. Why do you wear those shoes? Is there any special reason? or uh, You mean my gold shoes? Your gold shoes. 
Well, the gold shoes go along with the fancy dresses, and also they're used for a technical reason, because they're, they're made for the organ. They have a little bit higher heel, so you can reach the different pedals. And uh, they're very comfortable. That's the reason I wear them. Diane, I know that you've been very prolific in writing beautiful compositions. I love to write music. It's almost like taking a vacation from the other things that I do, because it gives me a chance to get out what is on the inside. And uh, it's, it's uh, a way to express myself. I, I mostly like to write sacred compositions, although I've written just some, some uh, classical pieces for the organ. But I like composition with words. I like composition for choirs, soloists, and I love orchestral music in combination with the organ. So I have tried to write music that relates something, a message to someone, uh, a message of hope, a message of inspiration, of joy, of uh, the things uh, and the, the joy that God can give us in life. And I want to say too, Diane, that uh, all the things that you've expressed and the things that you believe in experiencing God's love and guidance and, and your commitment to Him, it shows through your music. It shows, it's revealed through your compositions and, and how you play the organ. And uh, I know that uh, you have a very, very strenuous schedule. And I know that it saps you a great deal. And I know that people have been praying for you. Well, you know, one thing that really is important to me uh, in my life and in my faith is or are the prayers of my parents. Uh, even today, and I'm so thankful that they're still alive and able to pray for me. Whenever I do a performance, I know that they're praying for me. And if, if parents only realized how important their prayers were for their children, whether the children agree with these prayers or not, still they will remember that their parents or someone is praying for them. And that always gives me strength and courage. And then the fact that I truly believe on the inside that that God did give me these gifts, that He did change my life, and I want to serve Him with my gifts. Thank you for joining us on The Joy of Music for a special presentation with Diane Dish. We look forward to seeing you again next week on The Joy of Music. <laughs>